Welcome to Small Town Times. And we have a special guest today, Mike Jelena. <laughs> Mike Jelena. <laughs> Hi, Dave. You like it, Jelinas, right? Well, I think it's it's a long story, but uh, uh, tell us the Jelinas story. is what a lot of people uh, know yeah. me as. What is the long long story? Long story is that I am from a French uh, background in Montreal. My parents mm -hmm. were from Montreal, and it is Jelena there. And in fact, my son, who is a chef, is yeah. Jelena. Yeah. Uh, when I went to school in Kirkland Lake, Ontario, yeah. and I went to high school, I said, my name is Mike Jelena, and the teacher said, no, is your brother Jules and Claude? I says, yes. Well, he says, then you're Jelinas. <laughs> I said, okay, so let it be Jelinas. And that's what I've used ever since. Yeah. And if you go to Windsor, it's uh, Jelinas. Jelinas? Yes. Oh. So it's a multinational uh, name. Oh, Cool. Well, I can't uh, do the French accent, so I can't do the Jelena. Okay, Jelena. that's fine. Yeah. Jelinas. All right, I like it. So hey, we met a year ago. Yes. It's been a year, and it's felt like forever. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you mean, I'm sure you mean that in a good way, right? In a good way. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was great. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there's like there's three uh, guys that take credit for uh, uh, introducing me to you. Yes. Uh, there's uh, Ralph Salentano, there's Frank Atwood, and uh, a guy named Gary. Davidson. Yes, yes, yeah. Gary Davidson, yes. And uh, you came on board to uh, help sell ads for the uh, Back in the Bay magazine. Yes. And it was great. You introduced a new concept where we started selling in uh, sections. Yep. Yeah. Themes. Themes. Yes. Yeah. You've been a longtime salesman. Tell me some of the jobs. I started when I was about, uh, I would say 16 years old. I worked for a company called Fuller Brush Company. Mm -hmm. It was door to door. It was the male equivalent to Avon. Yeah. So uh, that's when I that's when I started, and from there I worked for an insurance company for a year, and then I went to a wholesale company in North Bay called McDonald's Wholesale, which was affiliated with uh, Carm Lucani and those guys. Yeah. And from there I got uh, I got picked by Benson Hedges to work for them, mm -hmm. and I worked for them for uh, twelve years, and they switched names from Benson Hedges to Rothmans. And then uh, I was um, headhunted to work for Nestle's Canada. Mm -hmm. So I worked for them for 12 years. And then uh, Nestle's, after 12 years, said, um, we're downsizing. So we downsized accordingly. Yeah, yeah. And uh, then I applied to be a, um, a uh, part-time teacher at CTS Canadian Career College, mm. to teach business. And uh, they uh, replied saying, we don't need a business teacher. We need a campus director. If you want to put your name in for that, uh, we'd take your application, which I did. And uh, I was with CTS for three and a half years. As a campus director? Yes, campus director. And at the end, I was in charge of uh, North Bay, Sudbury, and Barrie as far as sales and marketing is concerned. Wow. Yeah, yep. You've been all over the place, man. I've been everywhere, man. And, and a lot of sort of uh, links there. Uh, Fullerton, uh, Ted Thompson, he started off selling. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. I got the little logo there. I'll pull up it in, maybe. Um, and uh, yeah, of course, you're you're referring to the uh, the photos that we had in the the summer edition. Yes. With the uh, with the uh, Mr. Lucenti and the McDonald's. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, exactly. I used to work for Ross Riley. Yeah. A wonderful person. Uh, he passed away too soon. Oh, cool. But uh, he was a, he was a wonderful guy. He he basically let me do what I wanted to, and the sales went up. And he just let the, the more the sales went up, the more he let me do what I wanted to. So, and um, we actually uh, had some, I had uh, previous contact with your lovely wife because uh, you, when you guys were doing performances at uh, old folks' homes, yes. And what was that? Yeah, when we uh, we I retired. I officially retired fifteen years ago from CTS Canadian Career yeah. College, and uh, we sold the uh, we sold the house, sold most of the furniture, and we bought a motorhome. So we traveled across. Canada and the States. And my wife figured, well, once I have you all by myself, uh, I used to play a little bit of guitar. Yeah. So she said, you got to teach me an instrument. So the first instrument was uh, that she tried to learn was a uh, harmonica. Mm -hmm. So you can just imagine a harmonica in a 35 foot motorhome that lasted about two days. And then, uh, she, uh, we start teaching her, I start teaching her bass, play bass. So we were in Florida and she knew a couple of songs and I said, now we have to perform somewhere. Take her on the road. Yeah. And she said, uh, and, and if you know Karen, she's, she's not a, she's a shy person. Yeah. Yeah. She's a lovely lady. Oh, yeah. thank you. 
just because she wears your t-shirt. She wears my t-shirt yeah, everywhere. Right. So, yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to a place in Florida and I got a job at a, at a nursing home to play music. Mm-hmm. And um, so we went in there and we played music and we didn't get paid, but played music and she got the bug. Yeah. And after that, we played all over Florida. And then we came back to Canada. We played in Ottawa, pretty well every retirement home in Ottawa. Yeah. And then we used to travel from Ottawa for different tours. So we tour uh, Toronto and Richmond Hill and, and uh, North York. We played there, and then we played in the Muskokas. And then uh, we had a we had a section where we played uh, North Bay and Sudbury. Mm, yeah. Well, and, I, I was doing the bulletin board, uh, bulletin uh, briefs for the Nugget, and yes. that's where I first first knew knew you. Yes, really. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of cool. Yeah. Well, wow. and and now like there's no moss growing under this stone, eh? Like, uh, <laughs> like I, I I can list five different things you were involved with since I met you, but uh, most recently, and we were just at a meeting last night with the Ferris uh, uh, Business Network. What's the proper name now? It's a Ferris Business Network. Yeah, but uh, the the slogan is Ferris is the place to be. Yes, and, and that's, that's, the, that's the website, the website yeah. as far as the uh, Facebook is concerned. And some of the topics we were talking about last night there, uh, we're looking at. Uh, uh, we got the uh, the the, um, the movie coming up. Yes, September second. September second. Yes, it's going to be um, Mario Brothers, mm-hmm. and it's at Omichel Park. Yeah. So it's the first time that it's not at the waterfront for many, many, many years. Bringing things into Ferris, where forty percent of the population North Bay resides. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You've been listening. Oh, I, I listen. <laughs> I listen. Um, yeah, and we were talking about uh, the potential for a project of uh, a shad fly at your favorite park. Yes, yes, we're 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 talking about having a uh, well. First of all, it's, it's Byron's idea. It, w- it was his idea to come out with a something that would be recognizable as far as North Bay is concerned. You know, Sudbury's got a big nickel. Mm-hmm. And there's a whole bunch of other places that have their own little motto. I believe we're 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 recognized for the shad fly. Well, I, I always thought so. Yeah, well, that's right. Yeah. Because I recognize a T-shirt that's got a shad fly on it. Yeah. So he suggested that we should build a big shad fly and put it up at a park somewhere mm-hmm. in Ferris, of course. Yeah. Uh, at the um, at the park, my favorite park. Yeah. Which is uh, you know the name of it. Sunset. Sunset is is my favorite park. Uh, so uh, that's what we want to do is build a big shad fly, so that all the people, all the visitors that are staying at the Best Western and all the hotels there can actually walk there and get their picture taken beside the shad fly. Yeah. And, and another, this, another photo uh, moment for people can take home with them. Exactly. And if we can put North Bay in there, that'd be wonderful. So mm-hmm. it's a, it's a, it's a mem- memento of North Bay, if you will. Yeah, for sure. So we're working on that. Oh, right on. Well, uh, uh, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> so am I. It's a, uh, Byron is a, uh, when he puts his teeth into something, he doesn't let go of it. Oh, yeah. And uh, and that's good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I saw the interview that um, Paul Myers did with him. Um, he was well-spoken and, and, and described the uh, the essence of what the group wants to do. And it's just basically is uh, unifying a, a, a large section of North Bay that's somewhat had its uh, ups and downs. And, and, and uh, it's on an upswing, I think. I can honestly say that Ferris is a better place today than it was four or five months ago. Mm-hmm. I think we've, we've, we've put it up one notch. We're not done by any means. Yeah. But uh, if you've attended, and I know you've attended the Ferris uh, Fun Day, you actually, you worked it. Yeah. Uh, there was a lot of people out there. And a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, education went on where somebody walked into the old Peaches and said, oh, I didn't know you guys were in a restaurant. Yeah. And, and that changed two years ago. Yeah, you know, so so I, it, people came back to Ferris and, and looked at the different businesses. I think it's just a little bit of a spark of life added to the community that's there. It just needed to uh, um, have a little flame, a little, little bit of uh, air. I have a reason to come down. Yeah, I mean the bagpipes were wonderful first thing in the morning for the grand opening. Yeah, and uh, Mr. Mayor was there first thing in the morning as well, which was really appreciated. So he just gave us it gave us a uh, a. Um, uh, one more reason to realize that Ferris is part of North Bay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, of course, I had a little bit of um, hosted a barbecue with 176 Lakeshore, the uh, uh, co-working place. Yes. And, and uh, they have a beautiful courtyard, and look, more people are discovering those little nuggets all throughout West Ferris. Including Sunset Park. Yeah. and I mean, if you ever go to Sunset Park, it's a beautiful park. Oh, yeah. I mean, it can get 
there's things that can that can be better, including a sign that tells people. Well, that's one of your projects is to try to get some signage. <laughs> that's that's correct. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the the official the official rule from City Hall is that uh, they're not allowed to have any signs to advertise the park, unless the park is real close to the highway. Then you can have a sign. Yeah, I would think it would have been the other way around. Mm-hmm. If the sign is far away, I mean, if if the park is far away from Lakeshore, that's when you need a sign because you really don't need a sign when you're close to Lakeshore. But anyways, uh, they they're they're looking at having a ways committee. To look at the signage across across uh, North uh, yeah North Bay, so hopefully, yeah, ways someday. and means. They'll probably what they'll do is uh, just at the highway entrance to Lakeshore, um, have a a better listing of the jewels of West Ferris before you get to North Bay. Absolutely, that would yeah. be that would be wonderful. Yeah. But it, because because um, Sunset Park is, is is such an odd one because unless you know it's there. Uh, the local people know it's there, but the tourist really doesn't know it's there. Yeah. And to get there, if you're going through by, by the uh, uh, Churchills, mm-hmm. it's a real dog breakfast. Yeah. I mean, it really is. There's two entrances. One is the entrance to the parking lot, to the Best Western, uh, not the Best Western, the uh, Churchills. And the other, the other entrance really is an entrance for the motel, which is called Sunset Inn. Yeah. So I've spoken to the owner, and he tells me that a lot of people come park in his driveway and walk through his lot, really, figuring Thinking that the beaches are right behind them. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And then, of course, there's a no trespassing sign. If you go to the right, uh, another another person living there really doesn't want these people walking through his land to go through the water, which I understand. And but, the other entrance from Banner, um, with the the lot cleared, uh, the one. Uh, Right now, you look at it as a little mini uh, Newfoundland uh, with yes. those uh, with those stores and whatnot. What are the name of the stores? <sighs> very, very treasures. Very treasure. Yeah, and then yep. there's a really good hamburger stand there. Yes, there is Field of Dreams. Yeah, yeah, I've had a hamburger there. That's special. Yes, yeah. and then they have a candy store. Yeah, and then they have another store. It's it's uh it's almost like a Newfoundland village. Yeah, yeah, um, and that's a really that's probably the better entrance for that area. Absolutely, to get the sunset. Well, not, not to mention if you're coming south and you want to turn left to go to Churchill's entrance, you're taking your life in your hands because you're right in the curve. Yeah, yeah. So no, people yeah. don't see you unless they're right behind you. Yeah. So at least if you go in through Banner, uh, it's a straight line. So you just turn left, and you, you know you got a lot of lot of room behind you. Now the. Um, that entrance at Banner, there used to be the um, Golden Dragon. Yes, that's right. And it used to be the Top Hat, top top hat, hat. Pavilion. Yes, it was. Yes. Yeah. 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 So a lot of history in that corner. I wonder if one day somebody's going to develop that. Yes. <clears throat> I, I, I walk by there every day because my wife and I go for a walk on mm-hmm. Sunset. We, we leave the Sunset Park and we walk right to the end, right to where the uh, Golden Dragon was and then come back and then you walk on banner and go back to the car. So we do that pretty well every day. I imagine so. some people that live near Sunset Park don't mind not a lot of having a lot of tourists there. <laughs> well, that's a million dollar question. Yeah. You know, I really don't remember. There's no business there. There's nothing happening for people to, once the tourists get there, other than enjoy a beautiful park and exactly. beach. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But it's one of those things where, is it the chicken or the egg? Yeah. yeah. Do you have one or two stores there or... or, or trailers to sell food and then you get the signs ready or you get people to go there and then you get some people who want to uh, who who want to um, do the free enterprise thing yeah and actually you know as a park uh, it, it just knowing that it's a place there you can leave your car within sight and within meters you're right there at a bench looking at the lake yes nice solitude it's beautiful there's 26 benches there. Yeah. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah. Right and there's six picnic tables. Yeah. And uh, if you walk a little bit further out to the point on the rocks, I've fished there, actually. Yeah. yeah. It's nice. Yeah. Underutilized, for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there, there's still the odd wedding happening there, which mm-hmm. is good. But... Uh, the, You're also involved with the Dion's Museum. Yes. What the hell? Yes. Uh, the Dion's Museum is, is near and dear to me. I joined it... Uh, Three years ago, I was in Ottawa, mm-hmm. and uh, we joined it uh, only because I, you know, I have uh, an association with uh, with Annette Dion. Mm-hmm. Uh, 20, hmm, 1998, I was president of the Chamber of Commerce. 
And at that time, we wanted to have a dinner and recognize somebody who was special for North Bay, somebody that had did a lot of things for us. So we contacted the Dion's. It was three girls then. And we huffed and puffed and negotiated. And finally, uh, Carlo Torini, who's in charge of them, said that the ladies don't like to fly. So I suggested that I would get a van and I would drive to Montreal and pick them up and bring them back to North Bay for a celebration. And then the day after, I would bring them back to uh, Montreal, which they agreed. Hmm. So I got to be their, their chauffeur from Montreal to North Bay. And it was a, it was a wonderful experience. And that was 1998. And I'm still good friends with Annette. Like I usually call her every second week to see how she's doing. Yeah, you were instrumental with her almost coming this spring for her birthday. That's correct. Yeah, yeah we were going to bring her back. We were going to rent the motorhome this time. Yeah. So she could uh, stretch her legs and there's a washroom on the motorhome and everything. But her health is not, I mean, she's 89 years old mm-hmm. and her, her health is not that good. So we decided that uh, between Carlo and I, Carlo Torini, that it probably wasn't a good idea. Yeah. Just yeah. so she would be there, you know, versus what happens if she gets sick. And Great swing and a miss there. Well, yeah. we tried. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's cool. Yeah. Uh, did you see that musical? That uh, Yes, I did. Yeah, what do yes. you think of it? Beyond the Five, yes, yeah. it was it was very well done. Jerry Mendocino's uh, Jerry baby. Mendocino, yes, yeah. right, yeah, that's the second year that he did it, yeah, and it was very well done. And he's added, I think he added eight minutes at the end, which was the the family's perspective, and that's why I love being with the Dion Quince. I get to uh, uh, do the tour guide every Friday. I'm off now for I'm not doing it now, but uh, I used to do. It, I was a tour guide every Friday. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's a gentleman called Brian Callahan who also does tour guide, yeah. and uh, and I know Annette very well, so I can I can speak on behalf of that side of the family. Mm-hmm. Brian can speak on behalf of the other brothers and sisters that were also part of that family. The other five, and well, the other uh, the other eleven or fourteen, whatever it is. Oh wow! Well. Because don't forget, there was six girls or six children when the Dion Quince were born. Oh, I thought it was five. Okay, good. Yeah, well, there was six, but one died. He was very oh, young, three yeah. months old or something. Right. But there was five kids upstairs while she was having those five babies. So there's 10. And she had, I believe she had six more after that. Hmm. So uh, it's a big family. So, and, and when you think of the Dion story, you never think about those other people, the other five or six that were upstairs and the other, I believe it's six, they were born after that. Yeah. You know, so and a little that a little bit of that was mixed into the second musical a little bit more to show yes. that you know how they felt and a little represent. And yes, it, that's right. They added eight minutes to the to the presentation yeah. just to do that. You know, it's a it's a, just an example of of looking at it in two different sides. Annette uh, used to tell me that they used to get these wonderful dresses for picture taking, and once the picture was taken, of course, the dresses were gone. Now, the rest of the family, all they saw was Annette and the four other ones getting beautiful dresses. Mm. And here they are dressed in farm uniform yeah. saying, oh, look at the beautiful dresses that they get. Yeah. So, And this is where the misconception between the five girls and the rest of the family came in. Yeah. You know, they, uh, there was a lot of things going on. That, that would be heavy for everybody. Yeah. It was tough for the whole family. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Brian is right. Um. You're not volunteering. You, you got uh, an operation come up. I want to talk about it. I want you to talk about uh, what it feels like heading into an operation like this. Well, it, it's it's like any other operation. You have mixed feelings. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm I'm getting my my heart fixed. It's a heart valve that's yeah. being replaced. I have mixed feelings. Um, of course, it's it's not so much the operation. It's after the operation. Mm-hmm. It'll take a while to recuperate. Yeah, because this this is where they have to, it's open art, right? They have to split open the sternum. They to, and, yeah, they they split open the sternum. From what I understand, they split open the sternum, and somebody puts their hands in there, takes out the heart, yeah. and they put it on a table, and mm-hmm. they work on it. Yeah. Meanwhile, they have two tubes, a bunch of tubes in you, keeping you alive. Pretty exciting, eh? Yeah. So they put it on the table <laughs> and they work on it. They, well, I've had uh, two full hip operations, hip replacements. I know a little bit about the trepidation yes. of walking in there, un, in there under your own vo- volition and basically signing away. You have to be prepared not to walk back out. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty heavy. 
Yeah, and that's and that's worse than the the actual operation. The, the doctor who's going to do it, his name is Doctor Chan, and I spoke with him. He does between sixteen and twenty four of these operations every week, so he probably does three or four a day. Wow. So I'm not special. I'm just you know. But if you're going to get anybody to do it, uh, that's the person to do it. It's not his first rodeo. Oh yeah. Well. Um, wow. Yep. Wow, that's cool. Yep. So again, to answer your question. It's not the idea of the operation. It's the idea of the time after. Mm -hmm. It's going to take a while to recuperate. Yeah. And uh, I just... And you're such a busy guy. And I'm such a... And I, and I like to be busy. Yeah. I, uh, you know, I won't be driving. I can't drive. So my wife will have to drive me all over the place. I'm sure she'll love that. If I, you know, if I can get out of the house for the first week yeah. or two. Yeah. So that's, that's what bothers me a lot more than the operation. You're not going to make your sales targets this month. What the? I know. Yeah. Sorry, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you'll be back for the Christmas edition, the winter yes. edition. Well, I'm planning on it. Oh, I'm, I, I'm yeah. really planning on so. it. I'm and just selfish like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that's, it's pretty wild. Uh, so whatever, you know, like you've known about this for a little while. You yes. Know, about five, six months. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It's a... Uh, Again, you try and you try and not think about it, uh, and as you get more explanations into it, what's going to happen? What's you know what's the whole thing is? Uh, the, uh, the the thought of of passing away is not a major thing. I mean, I think you've lived a pretty full life. I think I've lived a pretty full life. How old are you? I'm sixty uh, sixty twelve. <laughs> so, so I'm seventy two. Yeah. Yeah. But the but the, the the thought of of you know like you said I've I've done a I've done a whole bunch of things in seventy two years. Uh, so how many kids you got? I have two kids. Yeah, I have a daughter Cindy mm -hmm. who teaches in uh, in Orleans in Ottawa. Okay, and she has two boys, Jackson and Mason. Oh, Jackson is eighteen. He goes to um, Algonquin College mm. in Ottawa, and of course Mason is younger, so he's still in high school. Oh, that's cool. Uh, and he's taking business. Grandkids. Yeah, yeah grand, those two grandkids. And then I have a son, Bob. Mm -hmm. Bob is in um, Jasper. Yeah. He's a chef. Mm -hmm. He's been all over the world. He's been, he's an he's, he's executive sous chef at a um, resort in Jasper. But again, he's been, he was teaching culinary management in Bangkok for a while. And then he was on the cruise ships and then he was, teaching at Algonquin in Ottawa. So he's, he's had a full life too. He was, uh, he was at your place for a while last year and I, I noticed you were getting a little bigger. Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Having a good chef in the house. Yeah. 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 He's a great, he's a great chef. He really is. He's, he's, he must be proud of both of them. I'm proud of both of them. In fact, I'm seeing Cindy this afternoon. She's uh, they have a cottage here. Oh. So uh, tomorrow afternoon we're going to see her. Oh, right so on. Karen and I are going to go yeah. spend the afternoon with Cindy and, and Steve and the two, uh, actually just one boy, Mason, and the dog. And the dog. And the dog, yeah. yeah. Well, so, what else are you doing? Like, is, did we cover it all yet? Well, th there's one thing you didn't cover, Dave Dale, mm -hmm. is, is uh, as we were talking about the Ferris Fun Day, yeah. and we're working on a special project for Christmas. Oh, okay, right. And it's, it's going to be called a, uh, a, a uh, No Parade Parade. It's going to be at night. And typically when you go to a parade, you got mom and dad and the two kids standing in a puddle of water waiting for the attractions to go by and freezing. In this no parade parade, mom and dad and the two kids jump in the car and they drive to Lakeshore Drive. And they'll drive through Lakeshore Drive and on the side of Lakeshore Drive will be all the activities. For example, one business might be a uh, fictitious cookie factory where you get a free cookie. Another place might have a nati nativity scene. Uh, you might have a petting zoo, animal petting zoo. Which one's the hot apple cider with the rum spike in it? Uh, I don't know yet. We haven't decided. Maybe yet. that might be at 176 Lakeshore, but we might have oh, to good. get a liquor permit for that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. So whatever, whatever they, whatever the businesses do, if they do half of what they did for the Ferris Fun Day, that'll be wonderful. Yeah. We're suggesting lots of lights and lots of music. How many businesses were involved with the Ferris Fund Day? It's about 100. I wow. think it was 102 businesses that were that signed up, that we have their email address and we mm -hmm. have everything. And that, that benefited uh, Big Brothers and Big Sisters? Yes, yes we gave uh, 2000 
$392 to Big Brothers. We sold close to a 1,000 hot dogs at a dollar each. Thank you, Dave, for selling some hot dogs. We also had um, pizzas for a dollar from Eastside Mario's. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to give you the whole list, but we did have a car wash yeah. for $5. And all the proceeds, including, uh, including uh, all the money that was made, Went to Big Brothers, Big Sister. Did you say how much again? Twenty twenty three hundred. Two thousand three hundred ninety two. Yeah, right on. Yes, yeah. I'll never forget it because I, I almost uh, got recruited as a Big Brother there during it because we had a couple of staff that were doing men in the barbecue here. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And they said the uh, I thought we thought it was going to be more of a commitment than that because, um, uh, but they said it was only two hours a week, um, and makes a difference. Yeah. Um. I liked raising my boy, and I coached baseball, and uh, it was involved with a few other things. And we always had a couple of kids on every team um, that a home, had a home life where they're missing uh, big brother, big sister kind of thing. Yep. Right? So uh, I know it's pretty important. Um, not quite ready yet to commit to it and do it, because I don't <laughs> want to disappoint a young man, right? Like, sure. You want to be the, uh, a good mentor. Right, you got to be in a good space and have the time. Even two hours a week, though, yeah. I, could, I might be able to do that. Two hours a week is basically going through movies. Yeah, no. But the uh, Big Brothers. This is the first time that I dealt with the Big Brothers and Big Sisters, and they were awesome. Like they had some of the staff, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. actually working the barbecues. Yeah, and the uh, the uh, the person that we dealt with was uh, Serena Le Kaplan, mm -hmm. and she did a terrific job she was just right on top of everything she was basically answering the questions before we asked the questions because we didn't know what they were doing we didn't know how much we could rely on them and they did the posters and they did i mean they they were uh, very very instrumental i mean i know they, the money went to them but they worked very hard for it yeah and it's uh, might not seem like much but you know even if people didn't donate to this they had the promo of Big Brothers, Big Sisters, and a bunch of people stepping up to help them. So yeah. those people may get in the idea that they should donate yeah. to the next time or they might, you know, help out. And, and don't forget, like, there, there was a lot of volunteers uh, from Big Brothers, Big Sisters doing the, the barbecues. Mm -hmm. And, and there's, a, there's, there's pride and joy in volunteering. Yeah. I mean, it's fine, fine to see you give your time. But... Volunteering is good. You have, a, I have a good time when I volunteer. I yeah. really do. Yeah, and uh, I've always had that, even with the chamber. So there is an advantage to volunteering. And if we can get these people to say, "I had a good time last time. Ah, I think I was washing cars, but I had a good time. I met Susie Q, and yeah, and, yeah. you know that kind of stuff." Oh, the town runs on volunteering, but there, there's never enough. Yep. Mm. Wow. Well, you know. Um, Thinking back of what you said about all the different places that you uh, worked at, uh, the the evil empire of tobacco giants, and 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 then the sugar kings that are killing us all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you feel guilty? <laughs> Actually, no. And and it's funny you should say that because when I was working for Rothmans, Benson Hedges, my son who was uh, six or seven uh, had a class, and the teacher said, "What does your father do, and how does that benefit?" everybody so he came home and he said dad i don't know what to tell him yeah and and we had a long talk and i told him that we basically uh, have a have a product that people want and that people need and that's what we do is is supply and demand and he went back to school and he was okay with that yeah did you smoke no nah, well years and years ago but how long uh, ago 40 years 30 years 40 yeah somewhere around there why long did you time. quit um, I've always had this, this, uh, asthma thing. So, uh, when I, when I really got the asthma bad, I, I, I quit. Yeah. Can I tell you a story about, about, uh, tobacco? Sure. When I was with Benson Hedges, we used to go to Ottawa. A lot of times we'd have a, what they call a launch. So we had a new product that we had to launch. And in those days we had easels and we had shelf talkers and we had posters and we had everything else. And when you went to these these launches, there was a lot of people involved. So we were from Northern Ontario, and they had people from Toronto and London. 
and we all stayed in a hotel. And the big thing is when you finish your your day, you had to come up and there was a big, big blackboard and you had to put how many sales you had on that blackboard and how many pieces of advertising you put up so that everybody can see. So it was important to get a sale to every place you went to. So I remember I walked in with my uh, my my little easel, my poster and the cigarettes and a little display that goes in the counter and I'm walking by and as I'm walking by, I see this older gentleman who's over there on his on one knee and he's doing a display of what used to be called um, uh, Tampax. Mm -hmm. Maybe still call that. So anyways, I kind of said hi to him and he looked at me disgruntled and I walked right to the counter and I told the young lady, I said, can I speak to the owner? And she said, he's right over there. So I went back and I talked to him for a while and he proceeded to tell me exactly what he thought of cigarettes. He says, I, and this is a pharmacy now. Mm -hmm. This is 20 years ago. He says, I carry cigarettes because I have to, not because I want to. And cigarettes are terrible. And he went on and on. And he said to me, he said, uh, yeah, he said, they're, they're very bad. And I said, look, I understand. I don't smoke, but you know, some people do. So he looked at me and he said, uh, you sell cigarettes and you don't smoke? I said, yes. Well, he said, that's kind of hard to believe, isn't it? I said, well, I said, you're putting up that Tampax display. It doesn't necessarily <laughs> mean that you're using it, right? <laughs> so the older gentleman said, all right, bring your display, bring your, bring your, your, your easel in. <laughs> so I had nothing to lose, right? Yeah, nothing to lose. That's yeah. good. I yeah. know uh, you're, you're a great salesman. And I, I know that, uh, that you sell a lot of good things like ads for the Back in the Bay magazine. Yes. And uh, you sell rink boards and stuff for the Paws and Voodoos. Yes, I do. You work with, uh, uh, for uh, Jim Bruce. Jim Bruce, right? yes, I do. And, yeah. uh, and you have a really good circle of, uh, of friends there. Uh, uh, Tony up at the, the Bay Restaurant. Bay, yes, Bay Truck Stop. Yeah. I, I appeared on one of his ads, one of his... Um, uh, uh, advertisements one time. Oh, did you? Yeah. Yeah. When he talked about it, he said, I got lots of friends and he went around and you had to say something. Yeah. And my line was, and I'll never forget it. Don't forget the big bay fish and chips. Pony. <laughs> and I repeated that about 15 times. I couldn't say it. So they just kept on rolling and rolling till I got it right. And then of course, uh, Frank was there and, uh, Tony was there. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it was. It was well, Gary was in one of his ads too, not too long ago, as a, as a Sasquatch. Nobody knows that, but I guess everybody will now. <laughs> yes, Gary was a Sasquatch. Gary Davidson, the Sasquatch. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was going to ask me, but I didn't have the height. Yeah. And Gary's got the height, so he, uh, he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's and Frank is on that one as well. Yeah, Frank Atwood with uh, Nipissing Reader. Nipissing Reader, that's yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah no. Uh, you have a, a wide circle of. Uh, acquaintances and, and, and solid friends here. North Bay is good for that. You know? North Bay is very good for that. I know when I lived in, uh, in Gatineau for seven years, uh, it, was, it was not a, first of all, uh, there was a language, I speak French, Karen doesn't speak French, and there was a little bit of a language barrier. And if you're not from Gatineau, you're, you're not from Gatineau. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, I didn't, I shouldn't say I didn't have the connections because when I moved to North Bay, all these people, Tony, Frank, and Jim Bruce, and yourself, I mean, we never hung out when I was living in North Bay 15, 20 years ago. Yeah. So uh, it, was, it was all new people that I met. Um, Paul Pruno is another one. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know Paul Pruno 20 years. I know of him. Yeah. But... Uh, well, that's right. You, well, you're right in a music column uh, in... Uh, based on your interviews for Kojiko, your show there. That's correct. Yeah, I have a, sh a weekly show. It's a weekly show. It happens more than once a week. But it's basically a program called Music North Bay Style. Yeah. When I came back to North Bay, uh, one of the things that I really wanted to do is, is to do a, a program where we would recognize the, the musical icons in North Bay, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're talking about Don Bros and Billy Vrabrosh and Paul Pruno and Ted Chase. Yeah. And I, I spoke with uh, Joey Rusi, and he thought it was a good idea. So I, I basically contacted these people, and we did interviews. I also did John McGale mm -hmm. about two months before he died. Oh, well, that's a which timely was, interview. Great oh, to have. which was really good. John McGale, uh, when you hear him talk about what he's done, mm -hmm. it's just unbelievable. Like he's yeah, what a loss. Yeah. What a loss. But I mean, he's here's a kid from North Bay 
who was, figures I'm going to play a little guitar, and, and he didn't. He wasn't afraid to do anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, he called up this band from Sudbury and said, do you want a guitar player? Yeah. And they said, yeah. <laughs> and then he played with them, and he toured uh, all over northern Ontario. And all of a sudden, they're in the same hotel room as as uh, Offenbach, because they used to play different, the same same crowd. And he got to know Offenbach a little bit, and then uh, Offenbach called him up and said, would you like to join us? And he said, well, I don't know. You know, I'm, I live in northern Ontario. I don't speak French. You want me to join a Quebec band? And he said, well, the offer's there. They called him three times. Wow. And finally, the third time, he said, well, I've got to go, because he had, he had gotten another offer from Lighthouse. He was going to play with Lighthouse. And then that fell through. So he said, well, let's jump on the bus and go, go with the roll. There. I think yeah. that's a big part about life is learning how to say yes. Yep. Um, and whatever the opportunity is. It knocks, answer the door. Yep, yep, right? yep. Some of my best stuff happened in that way. Absolutely. I mean, never be afraid. And today, uh, John McGill was, was fluent in French. Oh, yeah. I mean, he yeah. learned because that's what you had to do. And, yeah, I have know. cousins in uh, Montreal and they... They, uh, they wonder why I can't speak French, but when I try, they understand better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. well, that's cool. And like, yeah. yeah, and so so what I've, I've started to do is uh, I've started to write my my interviews, mm -hmm. put it on paper. Yeah. And those are the interviews that are showing up in this magazine called Back, Back in, in the Bay. Bay. Yes, let's yes. plug it one more time. Yeah, Back, Back in the in Bay, Bay magazine. Yeah. What do you think of the Back in the Bay magazine? I'll just well, let's go full full throttle uh, <laughs> and plug in here. I think Back in the Bay is a quality magazine, and I'm not saying that because you're kind of involved in it, uh, but uh, it is a quality magazine, and yeah. people that that read it and look at it are impressed by it. The quality of people that are writing for you. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know this one guy, and I won't tell you his name, because you know who it is, but uh, he never, he wanted nothing to do with the magazine because of political stuff. Yeah. And one day it was delivered to his house. And he called me and he said, Mike, this back in the bay is good. Yeah. I said, yeah. He says, it's the, you may not like this, but he said, it's the next Nor uh, North Bay Nugget because it's got quality interviews and uh, the advertising, advertisers mm. are good, good quality advertisers. Yeah. Uh, it's a good magazine. Mm. Yeah, I know I'm proud of it. And I'm proud of the people that uh, help well, it come to fruition because I can't do it by myself. Yeah, no, no, you should be proud of the, I yeah. mean, it was your concept. It was your, your baby. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, Our long? 11th edition is coming up this fall. Yeah. That's yeah, pretty wild. Yeah, well, there you go. And that matches the 11 that I did with the first iteration, uh, a bit of the Bay Magazine. Right. So uh, when this fall one comes out, I'll, I'll have been um, publishing 22 magazines since I left the Nugget. There you right. go. Yeah, no, that's, that's yeah. cool. And I was very glad to have you on board, and uh, um, you made a big difference, and uh, it's helped shape our, our new sort of section approach. I like that theme approach, if you want. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah well, it's funny how many people, like when I when I go to see different people, I'll say, back in the Bay. And I'll say, what's that? Well, I said, Dave Dale. Oh, Dave Dale. Hmm. So you have a very good reputation in North Bay as well. I mean, you've been around a couple, what, 30 years at Nugget? Good is in uh, a broad uh, recognition. <laughs> we'll, we'll just say it that way. <laughs> well, it, 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 people know about you. Yeah. And yeah. positively. Yeah. And well, I, I've been trying to, uh, you know, Trying my best to be yep. uh, forthright and part of the community, and sometimes, sometimes you have to go against the grain, and people respect that. Yeah. So you're very well respected. Well, thank you, thank you for saying that. I, uh, I, uh, I'll try to live up to that. Okay. As we all try to live up to our our best selves, right? You, yourself, and everybody else. Yeah. Absolutely. So what's next on your list after you, re you recover and get back on the horse? I'm not sure. I'd like to still work with the, the Ferris uh, mm -hmm. Business Network. That's, that's a going concern. That, that's, like, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, You're building you, something there. Well, we, you were at the meeting yesterday, and we talked about what we want to do. And basically, we want to have one event every season. And, and that's what I'd like to see is one event every season. And because we have 100, and I think it's 105 or six strong business people now, I think we can have a little bit more of a voice in saying, you know, this is what we'd like done in Ferris. Not because we're being, you know, 
not because we want more than anybody else, but uh, and like the movie is a prime example. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, why wouldn't they have a movie in a section where 40% of the people live? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, Spread it's, it out a little bit. Yeah. yeah and, and, and there's no malice. There's no, no malice from yeah. these people. It's just that they never thought of it. They just said, okay, well, you know, we'll do it there. We'll do it there. Yeah. And, and now it's going to be in Ferris. I think the whole community is going to benefit with a stronger Ferris. Absolutely. The whole, you're right. Because we're working on next year, uh, we're working on the Ferris Fun Day, mm-hmm. and it's going to be bigger and better. Yeah. Now, next year, when we do the, um, the Christmas thing, uh, it's going to be, again, bigger and better to the point where it'll be a good attraction, a good tourist attraction uh, as far as Sudbury and the Pembroke and the Tritown is concerned. And the year after, we're going to try and get the Toronto and the, uh, the Ottawa crowd. And that's how big that will be this, this uh, Christmas thing. I like the way you go about things. Dream big, work oh, hard. There you go. Right on. Yeah. Um, unless you have something else, I think we've had a great conversation. I think we have. We yeah. really have. It's covered uh, a lot of ground. Yes. Yeah. It feels like you and I are sitting in a coffee shop. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> kind of how it is. <laughs> Except we didn't talk about politics. And that's okay. That's all right. Well, you don't have to talk about politics all the time. I know. That's why, right. why muddy up the water? <laughs> right that's on. Right. Well, uh, Best of luck in your recovery from your your big operation, and uh, we'll be pulling for you. And there's a lot of people, uh, I'm sure, that will be uh, praying for you as well, and then uh, help you. If you need any help while you're recovering, um, I'm sure I can find somebody. To- <laughs> <laughs> you're actually the fourth person that has offered that, and I, I really, I'm humbled by, by what you're saying. Yeah, we'll, we'll be a, there for you, man. Good. Yeah, that's cool. good. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dave Dale. Mike Gelinas. <laughs> I like it. It was good, right? Yes, it was. Sorry about that friggin' phone ringing. That's all right. You know, I should have. Isn't that crazy?